I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show. We are taking a closer look at Marvel 2 and 1 issue number 6. Can the Human Torch and the Thing rally together the denizens of this alternate Earth to defeat Doctor Doom Galactus? Well, let's hop on in together and find out. Alrighty then, so this issue wastes absolutely no time upping the stakes and getting everyone involved. Our heroes are out in space, ready to make one last heroic stand against Doctor Doom, who in this world managed to inherit the powers and physical shape of Galactus. Granted, our heroes have something on their side that no one would expect, and that is the still at this time good Doctor Doom infamous Iron Man from the main universe. The good guys are ready to pull out all the stops against Doom Galactus. First, they force feed the thing a bunch of pin particles so he grows super huge to the point where he can actually lay hands on this guy. Doom Galactus is pretty interested at the idea of seeing the thing again because, well, at this point he assumed he was dead. And now that he knows that, hey, there's other universes out there very similar to this one to conquer, he knows exactly where he's gonna go once he's done absorbing Earth, the last planet in the universe. Next up, it's time for the Human Torch to make his play, but not the main Human Torch, the Human Torch of this planet. They recruited the Silver Surfer in the previous issue, and Norrin Rad was willing to hand over his power cosmic to the Torch. In a truly awesome scene, Johnny flames on like never before and turns his entire body into one giant cosmic bullet and aims directly for the chest of the giant Doctor Doom. All of these attempts, we discover, is actually one giant appetizer for the main course, which is involved involving Emma Frost trying to take over the Doctor Doom Galactus's brain like Doom did to the original Galactus. It's a plan that by all rights should have gone off without a hitch, but again, no one considered the intervention of good guy Doctor Doom or the fact that he might start acting like a dick again out of the blue. You see, he developed the consciousness switching device and he doesn't believe that Emma Frost is, you know, worthy enough to handle it. Jeez, it's like one egomaniac can't work with another egomaniac, am I right? Eventually, everyone shames good guy Doctor Doom into letting the plan happen. Emma Frost's consciousness is able to subvert the Doctor Doom consciousness, and instead of being an eater of worlds, this new fusion becomes a creator of worlds. Though, very briefly before abandoning her body, Emma Frost says, Hey, guess what, Dr. Doom? I saw the future, and no matter how hard you try, none of these heroes ever actually accept you. And if you read the last issue of Iron Man, that... That actually isn't at all what happened. Brian Michael Bendis just had him get ugly again and then turn evil. And with that, the day and by extension, this alternate universe is saved. The good guys buried their dead, including their villains. How nice of them. Alternate Reed warns the thing about continuing his quest, not only in general, but with Dr. Rochna, who he believes may actually have ulterior motives. He also says that Johnny and Ben better hurry before they lose all their powers, but that he's not too hopeful about it because even in his own research, he was unable to find energy signals belonging to the original Fantastic Four anywhere in the multiverse. Well, solicitations would seem to say they find them anyway, but either way, that's where the comic ends. So that was Marvel 2-in-1 issue number 6, everybody, and overall I felt it was a very strong conclusion to what was ultimately a really strong arc. 2-in-1 in, in general has been a really great surprise in 2018. It does a great job delivering the high-flying science fiction stories that the Fantastic Four comics were always famous for, giving us some good laughs, some good character development, and reminding us that, hey, you know what, the Marvel Universe does feel better when the first family is around. Heck, this issue even tries to do a better job of explaining why Doctor Doom would backslide into villainy than the actual infamous Iron Man, Iron Man related books did. Special praise should also be given to Chung Wong and the rest of the art team on this one. It just looks really good. Big sprawling space battles. I like it. I would give this one a very solid 8 out of 10. Again, if you've been trade waiting on this one, wait no longer. I think you should start now. So that was Marvel 2 in 1, everyone. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, be sure to take a closer look at some of these other books I'm working on. Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook, at Cape Joel, so you always know what I'm up to next. And hey, if you like what I do and are feeling in a charitable mood, please check out my Patreon link down in the description. Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. So until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again next time. Bye bye